Okay, so, granted there's a few bits missing, but I have it on good authority that we can switch it on and have a play. Oh no, look at that nice new panel down there. Some, still some bits hanging off it. Turn the battery master on. Ooh, things happened. Ooh, that's exciting. Righto, avionics master coming on. Ooh, ooh, it did things. Look at that. Terrain system failure. Oh no, terrain system failure. That's um, not a not a surprise really, because I am sitting on a timber box. Look at that. It's actually probably to do with the fact that it hasn't got a database card in it, and no database. So the really cool thing about this is because it's set up as an IFR aeroplane, uh, if you were to lose your primary AH, You've got reversionary mode on your HSI and turn it into an AH, which then can also down here have your uh, have your heading and tracking information as far as the uh, tracking the GPS and that sort of thing uh, down there as well. So you can uh, you can actually operate off one instrument. Aside from that, we'll go across to our HSI map, which with no GPS position because we're sitting in a hangar. Uh, maybe the chieftain's blocking the signal. Um, we can't yet get the map there. But oh, this is incredibly exciting. It's making noises. Not sure if you can hear that, but fans are turning on like it should. Oh, very exciting. After the, seeing the amount of work that Tim and Cobble put into this, it's um, very exciting to actually power it up and, and hear it make noises. I think the most satisfying part, which is nearly tempting to do, but I've got to resist, is to pull that plastic cover off there. What do you reckon, Rosie? You impressed? She's really impressed. Okay, so a bit of an update where we're at since we powered the avionics up. Uh, the panel is almost in. Put the visor back on. We've uh, got everything actually hooked up with the air data as far as the Head on static lines, everything hooked up how it should be. So we're getting very close. Uh, hopefully tonight, it'll be ready to run. Uh, I'm in the process at the moment of uh, putting the air meter in the panel there. And we've got these two big cables. I've been warned by Cobb not to touch both at once or I'll get an electric fence-like shock. So I'll pull the battery um, connectors off prior to doing this just to be safe. But very shortly, We'll hopefully have it in and get it running. So we're getting there. It's now a day or two later, I think, than when I started this version of the video. Um, this is the reality of putting these sorts of things together. Um, reaching under the panel, then you drop things, so you've got to go digging through holes in the floor, that sort of thing to fish them out. Uh, but we're getting very close. Hopefully be out and run this afternoon or tonight. As it's turning into out there, as we're losing sunshine. But uh, very, very close. Very exciting, and hopefully a test flight tomorrow. So we'll see how we go. Okay, so here we are, done. I uh, cannot resist anymore. I think it's time to remove Whoa. the unveiling. Look at that. Another one, and then over on the 650. You have no idea how satisfying that was after so long of, uh, of working on this thing. All right, let's power it up. Master on, avionics, master on. Databases are up to date, it's exciting. That's the latest software update of this now, tells you, you this at the very start. Fuel on board, we'll sort that out when we go to fly it. Continue. Map, we'll let it get a GPS position. Once it has a GPS position, we'll be able to go across to HSI map, which is far more colorful. 
There we go. Just got a GPS position, which means it now knows where it is. It's very clever. All the options we can flick through. Options. We can, it's touch screen. So we can have all our heading options. Oh, no GPS position. We've just lost our GPS position in the hangar again. Uh, oh, no, we've got our GPS position back. Uh, heading sync. I think I know what that does. We can go across to ooh, our map options. What sort of things can we do there? Ooh, we can have our airways on. We can have air spaces. Oh, below 18,000 feet. That should do us for the 172. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to have a go at all this. Very exciting. Yeah. Select a panel. Might actually help if I turn it on. Oh, there we go. We get some lights. The option to pair your telephone. The option to charge your telephone. I wish this was smell vision as I said before, because you can smell how new all that nice new plasticky smell is. So after we've turned the avionics and battery master off, now the two GI275s have their own backup battery in there, so we could either let it count down and turn off, turn it off, or if it was uh, in flight and we had an electrical failure, then we tell it to stay on. And I think that gives it another hour and a half battery. Don't quote me on that one, but uh, it's definitely over an hour anyway. Yeah, so lots of redundancy built into the venerable old 172 now. Can't wait to take it for a fly tomorrow. So a couple of little things to finish off tomorrow morning. Um, then lots of paperwork uh, that Cobb's been onto for a few days now. So uh, including the engineering order, the FTCs, that sort of thing. For the, uh, for the additional equipment, as well as 100 hourly, it's getting at the same time. And then, fingers crossed, should be able to take it for a test fly tomorrow afternoon. So we'll uh, see how it goes. It is pouring rain, most of it staying outside the roof. Uh, so hopefully that clears up. We'll be able to take it for a ride tomorrow. So we'll, uh, we'll see how we go in the next video with it. Thanks for watching. Okay, time to take it for a fly and see how it goes. Uh, we've just had a fairly extensive storm roll through so I delayed pulling it out of the hangar but that's all blown through lovely clear skies and we're ready to do a pre-flight gonna have a fairly good look around it just because it's had quite an extensive hundred hourly as well as the panel install and uh, look over all the flight controls that sort of thing just make sure everything's back where it should be and then we'll get stuck in and go and cut a lap bits talk to each other as advertised and um, I'm very impressed with how it turned out actually and thoroughly appreciate the work of everyone here at Hunter Aerospace who put in a, an awful lot of effort into getting this machine underway. Um, I didn't take an awful lot of footage of the flight because uh, by the time I waited for another shower to pass and that sort of thing it was getting a bit late but I did take a few clips uh, particularly uh, one which I'll show you in a moment of the, um, the visual approach mode that the Garmin 650 has, which is really incredible technology actually. Um, it's for advisory only and um, sets you up on a three degree approach path to your desired runway. Um, basically gives you a, um, a crosshairs, just like a, an LNAV VNAV or, a, or an ILS and uh, pretty amazing technology really, especially in a you know, 1980 model 172. So anyway, I'll uh, show those videos now. Thanks a lot for watching along on this little series about upgrading the avionics in a 172. Uh, feel free to leave me a message in the comments 
you've got any questions about it, I know there's a lot of people looking into upgrading the panels, avionics in these older aeroplanes at the moment. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.